I am Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about exciting things that are happening right here in our community, and today will be no different. You know, for over 36 years, Jazz in June has been one of those things that people have looked forward to experiencing every summer, and this summer will be no different. Here with me today to talk about his brainchild and the thing that he has nurtured for every bit of those 36 years and more is the executive director of the Tennessee Valley Jazz Society, Mr. Howard Bankhead. Howard, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thank you, sir, for having me here, Kenny. It's good to have you. I know you're always involved in lots of great things, but once again, we're at that point where we're talking about jazz in June coming yes. up. Yes. It's pretty exciting. It's been exciting. It's been an exciting journey as you have yes. spent so many years bringing this art form to the community. Um, I know a story you don't often get to tell. Tell me about the origin of this whole journey. Well, uh, I came to town in 1984, and the jazz site was already established. And I know it was called Jasmine Park. Um, uh, Avery Burdett and uh, some guys from around town did that in Mount Sinai State Park. Well, I came in and got involved in it, and um, my, my interest was world peace. The music gave me peace, inner peace. So I wanted to share that with, with, with others too as well, Kenneth. So uh, I, I, I agreed in marketing, and my purpose is to market the arts. So I always uh, wanted to share what I enjoyed doing. And so I, uh, me and members of the Jazz Society started to um, grow on the festival. And uh, we started from one day on Sunday to two days on the weekend initially, and now it's grown to eight days yeah. uh, uh, of activities throughout the community, Yeah, but coming this with Jasmine Mountain. Yeah, and, and you've got it interwoven now with the school system, you've got yes. uh, the golf piece going on as piece. well. <laughs> yeah, you've got all of these different things happening as a part of this now, and of course, I, I wonder could you ever have imagined your dream to have gotten this big? Not really, not really, but really the, this, the dream is only beginning, Kenneth, it's only growing up more. So. Because music um, is positive, it's wholesome, and uh, we need more of that in, uh, in the world, we feel. And so I'm glad that uh, we're able to um, be here this long, yeah. but we got more to do. Yeah. Because it's about the quality of life for our community, and I'm glad that uh, I'm in, uh, able to uh, be a part of that. And music precedes us. Yes, in our yes. own time, and it will yes. long uh, live beyond our existence. Yes, and yes. to be able to have had a chance to do a little something along the way, then you know that your living would not have been in vain. But yes. in the words of <laughs> a very well-known singer. That's right. Wait, 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 you know, there's power in the music, man. There's yeah. power in the music, man. So uh, this year, can I go up farther about our schedule Please. this year? Well, this year we add another piece to it. Um, this year we're doing gospel music. Gospel music is... Uh, well, uh, really started with spirituals, I heard, then from spirituals to gospel, and which we got blues and jazz. So this year we're having a component to it. Um, there's more, the very, uh, very education, I'm sorry. And uh, we're having a symposium on June the 22nd at Oakwood uh, College. And then the night- well, uh, University. University, I'm sorry, yes. And then they have uh, having a unity concert. And this is about Miss Liz Stone Raglan was a good, a uh, person here in the community, and she did a whole lot for the community. And she was general manager at WJB 9.9 yes, yes, FM, our yes, sister for years, station. Man. Yes, so, and she recently passed, mm -hmm. so um, uh, and she helped me to realize my purpose on this earth. Mm. And with that, I'm inspired to do what she loved, and she loved the Gospels, the Blues and Jazz as well, too. Yeah. And so we're having uh, this unity a celebration this year as part of Jazz in June. Yeah. And uh, so um, we start on June the 16th with, with, with um, a club venue. And then on the 18th will be Jazz on the Mountain. And then June 22nd is the event at Oakwood. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and uh, the Blind Boys was here last uh, for the uh, Panoply. Mm -hmm. Very good event, mm -hmm. very entertaining. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and it, it's kind of part of what we're doing with the, uh, the evolution of the music mm -hmm. and how the music help a people to survive trying times. Mm. And I'm still amazed on how the music, on how the Africans arrived here in 1640, around that time, and how they survived, and how they began to communicate through the music and, and, and through song, 
and how it inspired the people to survive yeah. and to impact American art and culture. Yeah, it is a pretty uh, profound experience and one that history certainly records in various ways mm -hmm. and one that people would certainly benefit from knowing so much more about mm -hmm. uh, through the work that you're doing. Obviously, this is one opportunity to be able to share that through educational means, yes. mm -hmm. as well as entertainment means, right. and to keep the spirit of the music alive, of right. course, yes. is, is a goal right. that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years, you've had lots of different performers come to yes. this community. It's not just jazz in June for you. There are other opportunities where you have music clinics that take place throughout yes. the year, yes. music workshops, and opportunities right. mm -hmm. for pe people to be able to connect. And of course, as I said, the golf piece is important for you, too, because yes. this gives you a chance to connect with kids, not just for the love of a game, but really you kind of focus on the character building aspects you know, of it. <laughs> you so, think golf made yourself, man? You know some, don't you, man? Well, you know well I'm not a golfer, but, you know, I, I could be. Yes, I always tell be, people yes. I'm not a golfer because right. I'm one of those folks that take it so take anything I do seriously, I'd have to have the shoes and the Everything, bag and, yes, and the clubs, yes, and yes. it would just get really, really expensive for me very fast. So <laughs> it, w it would, I, I've yes. kind of said, you know, not just yet. Maybe not there'll yet. be a day I get right. down on the golf course. But, but for these kids, it is a character-building experience for them more so than just, I want to put a golf club in your hands. That's right. That's so, right. So That's tell right. me a little bit about that. Well, it's called, uh, now program is called, it's called Par Excellence Youth Development, okay? And uh, Par Excellence Youth Development Program is it's more than um, golf, it's about building life skills and character. Uh, it has a mentoring uh, part to it, a uh, tutoring part as well too. And my interest really is for ye young kids to appreciate um, their math skills. It, it's a lot of math and golf, and reading as well too. And as long as it was character, uh, you have honesty, uh, perseverance, respect, those things that our young people need. And uh, I'm glad that we're able to provide that for our youth today. Mm. Uh, we have, we'll be having clinics this summer with that as well. Uh, we've got a grant from Alliance uh, to offer our program for kids with disabilities as well, too. Mm. So we've been, uh, we've been combining kids with disabilities along with uh, other kids to, um, to experience this golf uh, experience uh, program. Um, yeah, golf's more than hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's more than trying to get the ball in the hole. Mm -hmm. It's about perseverance, mastery, mm -hmm. uh, you're doing your best at practicing. You know, we're not worried about the results. We worry about the input. Mm -hmm. and the input will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. So we uh, have kids from, uh, from 6 to 18, um, kids from all over that we want to, uh, to help to, benefit, to be part of the yeah. program. And, uh, but it's more than uh, hitting the golf ball. It's about character, uh, perseverance, and uh, respect for others too. You know, every April there's a big um, celebration of jazz. And, um, just passed, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, you know, uh, and every April that occurs and people have an opportunity to once again reconnect with the music, to experience jazz sometimes, for some people, the first time or yeah, in the early is. stages right. of it. And then there's some people who are a little more seasoned and then there's some real masters in terms of the, the wide spectrum of jazz out there. You yes. have you have standard jazz, classic jazz, and you have more contemporary jazz, right, so yes. often called smooth jazz, cool jazz, mm -hmm. and some of the other more contemporary performers that are out there today. I wonder from your perspective, because you've been at this a long time, what is the current state of jazz? Is it still in, is it in high demand? Is it, is it um, you know, what, what is your... Just what is your overall assessment of where jazz is as a genre in society today? Well, it depends on what, uh, I guess, community you're in. Uh, in Europe, it's very high. In Asia, it's very demanding. In America, it has this uh, ebb and flows. And, um, the, uh, but it's always uh, the demand in the higher echelons of society, as you can say, as you can say the more mainstream jazz. The smooth jazz has, has lost some of its appeal on some radios around the country. But I love smooth jazz myself. I love from the um, from uh, uh, Gerald Bright, Night G, to John Coltrane. Okay, and uh, but um, jazz is always will always be here. Um, it won't be as popular as it used to be in the past. Uh, but it's a, a hard art form that's created in America. It, it, we, we say it's born in America and enjoy it worldwide. And, uh, but my interest is for young people to know the music itself. Now, of course, they say that if you play an instrument as, as a youth, you're more likely to, 
to get hired because the practice of music helps you with your brain skills as well. So um, the music uh, is, is sustaining, uh, like good food is, you know, uh, there's power in the music, but we have to make sure our young people get a chance to enjoy it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be exposed to other type of art forms, and that's fine too. Mm -hmm. But I interest for young people to know the music and, and the value of it. Because when you get older, I don't know how much rapping you, you be doing when you're older, right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you do, that's fine too. But we know that uh, we need to grow the audience. Because the more audience we have of the music, the more the industry will appreciate it. So our interest is to grow the audience of the music and, of course, get kids to, to play instruments as well too. You know, good music is good music. It doesn't matter to me what kind of music it is. Yes. I, mean, I love good music. I Even more so than the music, I love good musicianship. Yes. And it's nothing like live performances. It's nothing like seeing the musicians and the artists actually creating that craft. Right, yeah. Expressing themselves and yes. uh, mm -hmm. covering a whole range of stuff right. as a result of uh, their skill set and their interests and their curiosity and their ability to... Uh, improvise and just all of these different kinds right. of things that happen mm -hmm. in the moment and then the energy that comes from a crowd that connects with that performer uh, becomes very very um, exciting as a process of that and I, you know there's really nothing better than that you know right. to, to have a live performance of something I know so many performers out there that you know I love their music on their CDs and, and you know their mp3 files and things like that but then when I see them in person, I have so much more appreciation yes. for what yes. they do. It's a pretty yes. remarkable thing, and I know that your ability to bring live jazz to the community has to be a very special thing. It is, Kenny. I know you've done some jazz yourself too, through the years, so I'm glad for that, too. When we came here, it was very little jazz yeah. in town, and now that uh, it's growing through areas, I'm so glad that we've done our part to, uh, to help make that happen. So, uh, But uh, the mayor says quality of life is very important. You know what he does for the, the city here, and I feel that we do that as well too. Yeah, uh, we need people to appreciate that, and like WJEB is, is doing the fundraiser right now, and it's love. It's it's wonderful to be able to turn on to WJEB and a WOCG mm -hmm. or JOU and, and JOU. I'm sorry, JOU. I'm, I'm old school. <laughs> and here's some good music, man. Yeah. Oh, it's so powerful, man. Yeah. And it's power in good music. Well, it's power to me in, in positive music. Yeah. And uh, we need to appreciate that more. The music um, uh, helps to make your life better. Uh, like good food, yeah. good music, good environment. Mm -hmm. That's what we need more of, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Howard Bankhead, he's executive director of the Tennessee Valley Jazz Society. If people want more information about the work that you do through the, pro through the nonprofit, as well as uh, information about the upcoming jazz in June, how yes, would they get sir. in touch with you? Uh, you can go to the website at www.tvjs. Dot webs dot com. Again, that's tvjs.webs.com. And my name is 256 604 8172. Right. And the golf website is www.peyd.org. All right. Okay. And we're inviting everybody to give us a call, man. All right. Howard, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being a part of our conversation today. We hope that you've gathered all of that great information and perhaps received some inspiration by talking about the music. Now it's time to experience it. We hope that you'll definitely take note of the information that we shared on the screen about how to reach out to find out more information about the Tennessee Valley Jazz Society as well as Jazz in June and we hope that you'll like our Facebook page that will have information about this broadcast, a copy of the video, as well as what happens after the camera stops rolling. For Impact, I'm Kenny Anderson. Have a great day.